Uh, we have a person who the dialogue just flows from on the telephone. He does, yes. <laughs> right now, Delegate Michael Hornby, owner of said proprietorship here at this radio station, who is in Charleston for the governor's call of a special session, 27 bills uh, being proposed, 21 are supplemental funding bills. Michael, good morning. How are you, sir? Good morning, Mr. Stubblefield. Good morning, Rob. How are you? <laughs> You're a mister. Think, yeah. first. Good morning there, Delegate uh, uh, Hornby. We will keep this very <laughs> formal this morning. I think the Stubblefield Hornby saga novel would be great. I think so, too. I'll come up with yeah. a theme, and you do the dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to read that book. I don't know. I just don't know. <laughs> it'll, be a, it'll be a family attire. It'll be for the family. That's right. Yeah. You watched your Chargers game yesterday, Michael. I uh, I caught the second half because we were in uh, we were in the caucus for for most of the first. So once I started watching, we started losing. So I've realized it's it's me that the Chargers have a problem with. Yeah, well, uh, you know, Mahomes threw a touchdown pass in that game, sixty five yards in the air. Yeah, and it was a rope. What a throw! I mean. You know, to lose 17 to 10, you know, you, you can come away from that and go, you know, with the injuries we had, uh, it's still a positive. It was a, it was a close game. And it looked, yeah. uh, from a visual standpoint, having grown up in the 70s watching football, that looked like what I remember seeing as pictures from old AFL games with the Chargers in their classic Chargers uniforms and the Chiefs yeah. with those iconic red uniforms. Pretty awesome, just from that perspective. I'm a big fan yeah. of NFL uniforms from a few years back, and some of the classic looks. And the Chiefs and Chargers definitely have those classic looks. Yeah, well, tough loss, but it's a loss. How long will you be in Charleston for this special session, Mike? Um, so we're going to special session about eleven o'clock today. I have rulemaking review on Tuesday and Wednesday, so I'm here longer than most. Um, I hope we can get through our rulemaking review in about five or six hours tomorrow and i can be home uh tomorrow evening but uh we'll see if if the senators show up then it might be longer now you also have an interim session next weekend yes we'll be back on sunday um i believe what will happen today is we'll probably take up about eight or nine bills uh suspend some rules get those ones done most some of most of the, the 27 are going to go to uh, committee finance committees meeting twice on Sunday. We'll come back in on Sunday, uh, move those bills through with the right to amend um, on third reading, so that during regular interims we can meet again and address some of these bills that the governor's asking us to do. Mike, Mike, any of the supplemental bills pertain or of interest to the Eastern Panhandle? Um, well, I think uh, the communities and schools is, is one that will be taken up today. I think uh, Berkeley County was the first uh, county to, to use that initiative. Uh, there was co some concern uh, throughout the caucus that this was pr uh, promoting DEI stuff, and there was some concern. But the research I've done, and I've talked to Michelle Blatt and uh, local legislators, uh, well, not local legislators, but local uh, school officials, um, as well as uh, state officials and, and the, the analysts, I don't see a lot of it. I, th I think that initiative from Kathy Justice is uh, has been working. It's now been uh, taken up in all 55 counties. So I, I think that one really does i think the child care tax credit um does obviously the personal income tax does um there's not a lot of real eastern panhandle uh, initiatives on the call the uh the two major ones it, it appears mike to be out of this one would be the child care tax credit and the five percent personal income tax cut where do you st stack those in terms of likelihood of passing um oh jeez um i don't know i i can't answer the personal income tax cuz i don't know if it i don't we we don't know exact if there are some cuts to come along with that i think the house would be uh responsive to that um 
And we've asked for, hey, what cuts are we going to make in spending to make this affordable? Because we don't want to come back in a year and not be able to do uh, uh, pay raises or things like that. We don't want those to hamper us. I think with the child care tax credit, it, it's a very simple one-page bill. It's 50% of the federal tax credit, um, which I was very surprised how simple that bill was. Um, if you qualify for the federal tax credit, you then qualify for the state tax credit at, at a 50% rate. Um, I was pleasantly surprised how simple that bill was. What's the price tag on that one? We, we're we waiting for the uh, fiscal note on that. Mike, uh, f I know the governor's very much involved in the personal tax reduction. Will he do any hands-on uh, lobbying, uh, or does he keep an uh, arm distance uh, while you're in session? Bill, um, I in the two years I've been here, I haven't seen any hands-on from the governor. I think it's it's these are the things he wants. Uh, he communicates through our leadership team, and we hear from leadership as to what he wants. Um, so I, I don't – I mean, you might see uh, like somebody like Daryl Coles running the halls, talking to people, um, but – uh, you know, obviously, the governor won't actually do a lot of that himself. Coles, of course, is one of the yeah. governor's uh, liaisons yeah. here in the Eastern Panhandle, and Daryl was majority leader before he uh, ultimately was defeated by George Miller in a primary a couple years back. Mike, you're on rule rulemaking and review. What does that mean, and what do you do when you're on that committee? So basically, um, since the Republicans took over, we we, we established this rulemaking review. Most rules from agencies, like the actual policy that they're making, come up for review every five or ten years. Every law that we pass has to have a rule in place for an agency. So the Rulemaking Review Committee will go over each and every rule that agencies make. Um, so, for instance, an agency may want to raise fees on, let's just, for instance, say barbers and cosmetologists, they want to raise the fee from $35 to $55. We will review those fees or that rule uh, and, and, and decide if, it, if it's something that should happen or should not happen. So, Mike, as you go through the rulemaking, is that looking at the rules before they're put in place or yes. after they're put in, before they're put in place? So, okay. A rule that is in place that's coming up for review is is we review, and a rule that is new we review uh, before it becomes in place. Is there a committee that looks at every law that's on the books in West Virginia and determines if they're still necessary? So that's essentially what rulemaking does is every law or rule that every agency has, the only agency we do not have uh, – uh, power over or oversight over is uh, education. Do you ever find a law that's still on the books that we don't need any longer? Yes. We we consistently um, find rules that um, we do not need or um, we try to get rid of. And, uh, what's and we're able to pull any rule out no matter when. And what's the procedure, Mike, if you identify a rule that's no longer applicable, no longer needed, do you have to carry it through the, to the full house to uh, uh, for, the full, for the body to act up on it? So what happens, Bill, is we can pull it out um, in rules with our committee of 12, and we decide if that is no longer applicable. Um, we decide as a committee this is what's going to happen, and then it goes back to the full house during regular session to be voted on. So it, it's always voted on by the whole House, but our committee um, decides, okay, this is what we're doing and, and how we're doing it. Chuck Hurst just chimed in. Many rules have sunset dates, and often it is a review to extend the sunset? So most rules, um, since the Republicans, Republicans have taken over, have a five- or ten-year sunset. So Every rule will come up either every five years or every 10 years, depending on the rule uh, and what we decide. And then we, we sunset it. So every rule will be sunsetted every five or 10 years. 
so it always comes up for review. Okay, maybe you can address this one because Summer Barrett just added there is a difference between an agency rule and a state code. Yeah, so we can't change anything in state code and rules. A, a rule is, is able to be changed, um, but if it, if it is in code, then it needs to go to the full body, and, and you have to actually write a law to do that. For the rulemaking and review, when you dis, uh, dispose of a rule that uh, no longer applies, how often would you say that happens, and, and how many of those do you think actually occur? Is it one or two a uh, month or one or two a year? Hundred? Well, we we have 57 rules that we're doing tomorrow. It'll probably take us, I, I'll hope, like six hours is, is, is my hope. Um, we have two that we're getting rid of out of the 57 that the agency doesn't think they need um, anymore. Um, most are adjusted, um, and the reason they're in rules is so that we still have oversight, in my opinion. You mentioned one of the things that you review, for instance, if they decide that they need to raise the annual fee they charge barbers or anyone that's in a small right. professional license. Do they have to, I don't know who they is, by the way, but do they have to justify the reason why they need an increase in the fee and what the money is going to? So before rulemaking happened, they didn't have to justify me. I am a huge uh, proponent of why you raising fees. Government doesn't need to raise fees. Um, so I ask for a five-year history of their finances, where that money is going, what the justification is for raising those fees, and you know, how much cash on hand they have. Um, so I think I'm kind of a, a hawk on that committee where I don't believe government should be raising fees for anything unless there's a major justification for it. Um, so most times um, – we we block the raising of fees, in my opinion. Mike, I think I have a yes. Mike, for your uh, rulemaking and review, are, are, do most of these have a physical uh, imprint on them? What do you mean, Bill? I, uh, I mean, are yeah. most most of them that you uh, uh, deal with the rules and regulations are they some way address a physical uh, requirement? You mean fiscal, like financial? Yes, yes, yes. What did so that say? If there's physical. A fiscal note, <laughs> Phil, um, if there's a fiscal note on a rule, then it has to actually go back and and be reviewed by the finance committee. So, a lot of these things might have a fiscal note, like, "Hey, we're going to raise another one hundred and forty-seven thousand dollars in fees, or whatever it is." Um, that doesn't fly very well with the committee. Um, if it requires more money from the government, we will then refer that back to finance committee. Um, so a lot of these do not have a fiscal note because they understand if there is a fiscal note, we will definitely refer it back to finance, and they might not have their rule passed. The governor's 27 bills have a price tag of approximately $464 million, yep. according to the article I'm reading on Metro News. If you don't spend any of that money, what happens to the $464 million? So that would be surplus money that would roll over to the following year if we if we don't. Um, the, the, you have the ability in this session, and, and I, I know it's about 460, but there are some other additional costs in there. Um, so I think the the real numbers were about 640 million. Um, so each of these uh, appropriations are surplus money that the governor has the ability to, to, to spend or ask for. Um, but at the same time, there are some base building um, things in there that would raise the budget up. Um, you know, I, I think half of these might pass, is my personal opinion. About half? Yeah, I, I, th I mean, I think there's some legitimate things on mm -hmm. this call that are important, but there are some things on this call that maybe don't have to be done right now. They could be, they could wait till the next um, session, in my opinion, and um, we'll wait and see how the House feels about that. Should one of those be the personal income tax cut? Should that be something Morrissey and a new administration 
get to review not not the four percent that's already triggered, but the additional five percent the governor wants. Yeah, you know, for me, that additional five percent is it that important that we do that two months before an election, um, three four months before an end of a term. I, I don't know. And, and if there's cuts in spending, um, I could get on board with that. But just to do it, just to do it, doesn't make sense to me, and especially if it jeopardizes raises next year. I want to talk about spending cuts for a second here, Mike, because when we interview people who are, especially those that are involved with children in this state, we continue to hear about how underfunded and understaffed their agencies are. But you have the opportunity as a delegate to go through budgets uh, pretty thoroughly. Uh, are you convinced that there are still places this state can make budget cuts? Um, while I don't sit on finance, I have sat in on finance committee uh, meetings pretty consistently for the last year. I do believe there are still many places within the uh, agencies that um, – there is overspending. Um, there are programs that we spend on that I think can be more efficient. Um, while we don't, as legislators, we don't get to look at every line at them and decide, hey, you need to do this and you, you need to do that. I believe Patrick Marcy as the next governor would be very good at, because, you know, in West Virginia, the governor really controls the line item spending and how government works. We have a very strong governor um, in, in West Virginia. So the governor is the one who, who decides those things. Um, I, I look forward to seeing what Patrick would do uh, moving forward. Mike, we frequently hear that the budget uh, or the spending of the agencies need to be scrubbed. We've been hearing that for several years. Has there been a strong, legitimate scrubbing of the agency spending, looking at each, each line item and making a value judgment of the validity of the line item? Well, as I said, I think that's the that's the governor or the, the you know legislative but, branch that does that. But I ha, think has it been done? Has I it been don't, done? I don't. Yeah. I don't think so, Bill. Yeah, I, yeah. I think there's some some spending that um, is legitimate. I know we've broken up DHHR into three. We're still trying to get the results from that. Um, I I personally don't think that has been done, but I do think. Uh, moving forward, especially with uh, Patrick as as governor, I think that will be done. I think you're going to see a a, a a huge move towards that from what I'm hearing. Michael Hornby, our guest here on the program, owner of said uh, radio and TV station and uh, member of the House of Delegates, too. So, uh, Mike, when you do the interim session next week, what's different about what you'll be doing next weekend as opposed to what you're doing this week? So, um According to the plan, um, and again, this, you know, we have plans. We, we have our regular interim meetings with committee meetings, and then we'll meet and in session. We'll actually call in session and, and vote on, on these 27 different bills um, to decide depending on what the committees come up with. I think finance committee is the one that's really important this uh, this. I think they're meeting this afternoon after session, and they're meeting again on Sunday next week. Uh, most of these are surplus appropriations, so the Finance Committee is going to have the last say on it. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll meet during interims. We'll have session for in the evening on Sunday or, you know, in the afternoon on Monday so that we're not spending extra money. I, I still don't understand why the governor called session today. He could have waited a week um, and not cost the, the, the taxpayers any extra money. I'm told that amounts to $35,000 a day at least to bring everybody into yeah, town. I, I heard 50000 basically, but, I mean, yeah. You got to pay everybody to be down here. You got to pay for travel. We're all coming here in five days, so I don't know why it was so important to call it a week before entrance. But, but again, I'm I'm not the governor, so I don't know. 
If the governor calls a special session, does the legislature have the option of saying no, we're not coming? The legislature, ha- they have to convene, so we have to meet, but we could just go, hey, signy die, peace out. If, if you know what I mean, mm-hmm. uh, if, if we wanted to really upset the governor. But there are some things on this call that are really, really important and are timely um, that didn't get done in regular session because of that clawback. Um, there was some uncertainty with the budget. So there are some things that are important. I get it. Um, there are just some – there's a lot of things that – maybe aren't uh they're not as important they could be taken up next session uh mike can you give a couple examples of what's important and timely that should be addressed to this uh and you have 60 seconds 60 seconds there are some uh federal programs that are have dates on them so again we are the west virginia uh republicans we love federal money so there are matching dollars that we need to get in West Virginia to, to maximize our, uh, our federal take, if you will. Can't lose out on the federal dollars. <laughs> you know. Hey, $20, million, $20 billion budget in the state, $15 billion of it's federal. Exactly. All right. Three out of every $4 is federal money. So make of that what you will. All right. What do you have next, Mike? You go, you go to your rulemaking and review next? No, we're going we're going into caucus at ten. Then we got uh, session. We go into special session at eleven, and then rulemaking we'll reviews tomorrow. Gotcha. Okay. Well, well, good luck to you guys all at the Delta House down there. Yeah. Be, behave Delta yourselves. House well. Thanks, Mike. See you guys. Appreciate it. Michael Hornby, and appreciate his time this morning.